Hey everybody, this is Tox from Crits Happen, and I'm here with two new versions of Love Letter. The Love Letter Hobbit Battle of the Five Armies Edition and Batman, which are pretty awesome. So I picked these up while I was at uh, New York Toy Fair uh, from AG, and a lot of people saw pictures of them, and they asked me to just kind of walk through the cards in a couple of cases. So I figured I would go ahead and show that to you. I really like both of these styles of love letter. I think it's really cool because they each add one little element that's different. Uh, and I'll walk you through that and we'll show you real quick. If you're unfamiliar with love letter, I'm sorry the rock you've been living under is probably pretty huge. Um, but for those of us uh, who may not really know, um, Love Letter is a 16 card deduction game where you're trying to gain points by either outing other players uh, and guessing who they are or being the highest ranked player at the end of the round. So let's go ahead and talk about Batman first since I love Batman. So the, the bag is awesome. It's a little gray kind of bag with bat symbol embroidered on it. Um, the rules are a little different for this game. So for this one, we have Batarang tokens or little, little bat symbol tokens. And you actually win by getting seven of them, not four. And there's a reason for that. So apart from the list of cards uh, that you get with everything, you have Batman as number one, which if, if you're familiar with Love Letter is the guard. You see it says, name a card other than Batman and choose another player. If that player has that card, he or she is out of the round. Very similar to how the uh, actual guard works in Love Letter, the base game. However, in this version, if you correctly guess who the other person is, you get a bat symbol token, which is really cool. You have to have seven to win this game. So knocking people out with Batman is really, really good. There's five of them in the set, just like there's five guards in Love Letter. Number two is Catwoman. Look at another player's hand. Fairly straightforward. Makes sense that the cat burglar could sneak in and check things out. Bane is number three. You and another player secretly compare hands, and the player with the lower value is out of the round. Uh, so he is going to knock you out, potentially. Then Robin as number four makes perfect sense. Number four in Love Letter is the Handmaiden, of course, who I've heard from rumors that she is a Cylon. Um, but in this case, she protects you. And in this case, Robin, he protects you as well. Until your next turn, you ignore all effects on player's cards. Number five is Poison Ivy. Uh, as you can see, the artwork is just great in this one. It's really, really good. Choose any player, including yourself. Discard his or her hand and draw a new card. There's two of those in the deck. Then we get into the uh, one copies of each card. And number six is Two-Face. Trade hands with another player, which is really, really good looking art. Then Harley Quinn, number seven, if you have this card and either Two-Face or Poison Ivy, you must discard it. This is a great character choice, in my opinion, because it just adds to that double bluff using that number seven card or the Countess card from Love Letter of... Is that person really holding the cards, the, the six and the five cards, or are they just bluffing, which is really cool. And then number eight, of course, is the Joker. If you discard this card, you're out of the round. But of course, if you can hold on to him until the end, you'll have the last laugh. So the Batman version of Love Letter is really good looking. It's beautiful, it's a lot of fun. Quite frankly, it's my favorite way to play Love Letter. But right after that comes the Love Letter, The Hobbit, Battle of the Five Armies. Uh, Love Letter, The Hobbit, Battle of the Five Armies, The Battle of the Five Armies. This is probably one of the longer titles of Love Letter uh, ever had out in the public. So this one also has something different. So first you get these really nice, cool little gems. So instead of getting uh, bat tokens or little cubes, you get these like gems that are like the gems that they're searching for, uh, like the Arkenstone and things like that in the uh, Dwarven Mines. This one also has a different mechanic, but it also introduces two new ideas, which is really cool. So let's talk about them first. So number zero, not number one, number zero is the one ring. This card has no effect. When discarded at the end of the round, the card counts as seven. Now, this is really, really cool. This is a new card. This is a 17th card in the set. And basically what you're doing is, again, almost double, triple bluffing. You can discard this and people will think, hmm, does he have the Arkenstone, the eight card in his hand? Or does he possibly just bluff and want something else going on? There's a lot of interesting things you can do with this. It doesn't seem like much, but as you play this game, you start to realize there's a lot of really cool things you can do with the One Ring. 
Number one is Smog. Again, name a player other than Smog. Choose another player. If that player has the card, he or she is out of the round. Now, this is all artwork from the movie directly, so you're not going to see any like uh, new artwork. Number two is Bard the Bowman. Look at another player's hand. Okay, it's very similar, like we all know. This is the second idea that this version institutes. Number three is not Toriel. Number three is Toriel and Legolas. So these are the elves, and of course most people know Legolas, and if you've been following the Hobbit series, you now know Toriel, who's been kind of somewhat inserted. Um, but they're slightly similar and slightly different. I really like this. I think this is cool. Toriel says, you and another player secretly compare hands. The player with the higher value is out of the round, while meanwhile Legolas says the player with the lower value is out of the round. So two, three cards in the deck, and very, very cool, very, very neat idea. All right, Gandalf the Grey is your protector. He is number four. Number five is Keely and Feely, the dwarves. Uh, choose any player, including yourself, to discard your hand and draw a new card. And then we get into the single shots. We get number six, Thorn Oakenshield, who says trade hands with another player of your choice. Rather fitting, since number six in the original uh, love letter was the king. I think that was a really good choice. Bilbo Baggins. Uh, if you have this card and either Thorn Oakenshield or Killian Philly, you must discard your hand. He's the robber uh, in the whole group of um, dwarfs, so it makes kind of good sense. Uh, and actually, it's really good artwork on it. I think uh, it's a good choice of a picture from the, the thing, the, uh, the movies. And then number eight is the Arkenstone. That's the highest one. If you discard this card, you're out of the round. But again, if you have it at the end, boom, you're going to hold on to it and you're going to win the game. So that is an overview of the cards for Love Letter uh, Hobbit Edition and Love Letter Batman Edition. Let us know what you think. Uh, feel free to leave a comment below. Which is your favorite version of Love Letter and why? Uh, are you looking forward to playing these? Do you like playing other versions? Uh, or do you just not like playing Love Letter at all? I personally enjoy it. I think it's a really fun filler game. It's a great way to kill some time in between things. And now that they're not just introducing different skins, but introducing different concepts and different ideas and gameplay rules, I think that's going to be really popular. So let us know your thoughts. Leave a comment below. As always, you can chime in on Facebook and Twitter or at the homepage at critshappen.com. But until we see you next time, keep rolling those dice. We hope they're all crits. <laughs>